Welcome to an online Bible study from Harbor Sight Baptist Church, a place of safety, rest, and resupply. We now join Pastor Arbuckle for this week's Bible study. We're looking at what the Roman Catholic Church believes, and I hope it's been helpful to you. And again, we want to uh, think about this. The reason we are looking at these various groups and, and uh, looking at what others believe is not so we can have arguments. Not so we can be right and everybody else can be wrong or vice versa, okay? It's, it's more of a, an exercise, I suppose, if you want to call it that, for us to become even more familiar with what the Bible has to say. Because the Bible for us is, is the final authority. If the Bible, that's what the Bible says. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I want us to look at these uh, particular groups. We are looking at the Roman Catholic Church, and we have a, a, a lot to look at this evening because we're going to look at uh, what they believe about purgatory, okay? Now, before we get into that, let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your word and, and to consider, Lord, just once again, the truths that we find therein. Uh, we do thank you and praise you for uh, giving us your word and we ask that you would help us to study it uh, not just as an ac academic exercise or to get a head knowledge of it but more importantly a, a heart knowledge of it and then may it come out in our lives maybe we become familiar with your word so when we come in contact with people that are are lost people that have questions about what we believe Maybe it is that they would, they would say they belong to another um, religious group, uh, that um, we would have some familiarity with what they believe and then what the Bible has to say for the purpose of, of showing them your word, that they might come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior through it. We ask your blessings on our time. We pray for those in, in here in a little bit, Lord, that you would just... Uh, work uh, in their lives and we'll, that we'll mention to you. Uh, lots of folks on our prayer list are dealing with a variety of health needs. We ask your continued blessings on them. Give us wisdom, Lord, we pray. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, one of the basic theological positions of the Roman Catholic Church is that it does accept the Bible as its final authority. However, it still rejects the teaching, the biblical teaching of salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. And this is evidenced throughout their system of sacraments. You have to do these certain things and participate in these particular sacraments and so forth and their requirements of certain acts as well to obtain merit. It is basically a religion of works and we've d discussed a variety of other religions that uh, talk about that as well. But this particular idea of gaining merit and so on is vividly seen in the Roman Catholic Church concerning purgatory. How many of you have ever heard the word purgatory? Um, I spent some time in purgatory uh, when I was in college. Uh, different things, different classes, you just kind of suffer through, right? Um, but I, I digress, but what is purgatory? Well, let's start out with that. Uh, what is purgatory? And I'm, 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 let me just mention this to you as well. I'm going to read quite a bit uh, of, of what we've got here so you will know. And I, I'm, I'm getting these, uh, this information through, through a variety of different um, books that I have. Of course, you can pull mo much of this on, up online and so on. Of course, the Catholic Church has uh, material available and so forth to you as well. But what is purgatory? Well, purgatory is that place of temporary punishment for those who, departing this life in the grace of God, are not entirely free from venial sins. Okay. Now, they speak of different kinds of sins, venial sins and mortal sins. And a venial sin is a relatively slight sin. Okay committed without full consent of the will, yet not serious enough to be classified as mortal sin, yet not uh, mortal sin, which makes one deserving of eternal punishment, okay? 
it's, it's not so bad as to send you straight to hell. Basically, that's an, the, the thought, okay? It's a venial sin, okay? Um, I don't know what the, the designation is there beyond what I just read to you to give you an example of what a venial sin might be. Uh, it might be maybe just a little white lie. Maybe it would be, um, you know, a variety of quote-unquote little sins, okay? Um, and, pardon me? Breaking the speed limit, okay, that could be one there, um, exactly, some of those little sins, okay, but they're not entirely free from venial sins or have yet fully paid the satisfaction due their transgression, okay. Um, there was a German Catholic theologian by the name of Joseph Pohl who wrote a very uh, lengthy, several volume um, dogmatic treatise on eschatology, last things, and so forth, and he gives a definition uh, of this particular doctrine, this particular idea uh, that we just read. That's where that comes from, okay? This German Catholic um, theologian, Joseph Pohl. Um, there is another catechism which says, it gives us another definition of purgatory, that it is a place of punishment in the other life where souls suffer for a time before they can go to heaven. Um, those who leave this life in a state of spiritual perfection, however, go straight to heaven. Now, I have a question for you. How many human beings from Adam to now live their lives perfectly. Okay, there's only one. Well, initially there were, th there were two, uh, you know, on the earth, but they sinned, Adam and Eve. Of course, Jesus, we know, uh, his earthly life, he was sinless, okay? But none of us, nobody else, lives in a state of spiritual perfection like they're talking about, okay? So what that means is, by implication, we can take it to understand according to their, the, the Catholic doctrine, belief of purgatory, that most people will probably go to purgatory. Even, quote-unquote, good Catholics will probably go to... To, to purgatory for some period of time. Now, that, which brings me to the next question I have for you is how long does one remain in purgatory? How long does it take to suffer to pay the penalty for venial sins or sins that have not been satisfied since, our, since we transgressed? How long does it take? Well, there are three ways the soul in purgatory can be assisted in their progress toward heaven, okay? Because the soul in purgatory, one of the ways that the soul in purgatory would be able to shorten that time is by good works. But we understand that a soul in purgatory is not going to be able to do anything except suffer, as they say, passively. You just have to suffer through it, okay? Now, let me read a little bit more. Assisted, they can be assisted in their progress toward heaven by the faithful still on earth, which means that you folks still living, if I'm in purgatory, you can help me get out of purgatory or shorten that my stay there, okay? Now, how does that done? Well, through the mass. And it's customarily with an offering to the priest, okay? Now, there was a time in the Middle Ages where the Roman Catholic Church, Catholic priests, sold indulgences and basically an indulgence was a payment to help that departed soul 
out of purgatory earlier than anticipated, okay? Now, whether they changed that, I have no idea. But I do know that that was one of the, um, one of the things that a former deacon of mine up in Monroe County told me that he grew up understanding as he was being raised in the Catholic Church. He told me that his, their priest, when he was a boy, used to talk about high mass, high money, low mass, low money. And I said, what exactly is, does that mean? I have no idea. And he said, well, one of their relatives passed away, and my deacon's mother went to their priest concerned for the departed soul knowing believe or believing i should say that they were most probably in purgatory and suffering how can we help them out of purgatory and his priest said high mass high money low mass low money and he explained what a high mass was. A high mass is, is generally, as I understand it, from some of the reading I've done, is on Sunday, and you can see, you can watch it on Sunday on TV. There's a Catholic channel, I think, of t on TV. When you think about mass and all of the, uh, all that goes into a regular length mass, I suppose, on Sunday. Low mass, as I understand it, was sometime during the week, not necessarily on Sunday, and it wasn't as um, it wasn't as elaborate a low mass. It wasn't as a, as well attended as a high mass, and so forth. Now you have to also understand again, back in the old uh, in the um, uh, the Middle Ages, when there were indulgences, a high mass was going to cost you high money. So the more money you paid, the high mass was available, and that apparently had more benefit, more weight to it, if you want to call it that, than a low mass, although a low mass had a benefit. Okay, So that was one of the ways that one of the ways that you can get the soul in purgatory, out of purgatory, and on to heaven is by the Mass. Also, by prayers, okay? Pray for those souls that are departed, okay? And then also, good works on their behalf, okay? Uh, these reduce the period of time necessary for purgatorial suffering to have its full effect. Okay. Now, I was thinking about that uh, as I was preparing for this evening. And what I kept thinking about as I was studying, what I've been, it's often been brought to my mind as we discuss what others believe. Compared to what Scripture says, What would you rather have? I'm not sure it matters what we'd rather have. I, 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 where does all this come from? If, if it's not in the Bible, then where did it come from? It, it, Why do they believe it? <laughs> okay, that's, that's a, that is a good question, and there have been centuries of the progress. Okay? This, this started... They, Many, many. Okay, but it's it's been hundreds of years of development, hundreds of years of development. They will go back to um, the early church fathers, who, in explaining doctrine, would would explain it in a certain way, and then, unfortunately, really, if you think about it and you read through the Gospels, and you read some of what Jesus told the Pharisees, and you, you go back and you look at some of those Pharisaical um, Jewish rites and regulations and rules and all of that, 
and you look at what the Catholic Church has, 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 has proclaimed for centuries, and there is a very striking, in my opinion, parallel. It's very comparable because it is, it's a lot of rules, it's a lot of regulations. If you want to get good enough to go to heaven. And one of the reasons I think is why is it so believed is because not unlike Islam, because Islam thrives on illiteracy, on ignorance, okay? I'm not going to go into it this evening. Maybe that'll be a later lesson, but we could discuss what the Catholic Church has for centuries said about the Bible. They, at least in their history, and again, I don't know about the 21st century. I did read a report recently of, of something that uh, Pope Francis mentioned within the last few years um, that changed some things as far as their uh, belief in Mary being co-mediatrix and, and so forth, and, and part of, you know, you pray to Mary because you want to be saved, and she had a part in our salvation. They've changed some of that, okay? Now, I don't know where that, again, where it started. It was, you know, there were some theologians, Catholic theologians, that will tell you, well, shortly after the close of the New Testament, or they will tell you that the apostles believed this, Okay? answer this question for me if the apostles believed it peter who's the first pope why didn't he write it down if if jesus did want the church his sheep his people to believe these things why didn't he why didn't he give it to us and they they will cite early church fathers, okay, and why it was believed, again, I think it has to do with a lot of ignorance. It has to do with the fact that, quite honestly, even today, people don't read the Bible. Our neighbors don't say, I'm not allowed to read the Bible. Tim well, never allowed to have one. Yeah, None of those. Exactly. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, how did how did it get to be where it is? I really don't know. I I, I can't answer that question um, completely. Sure. Sure. Right. Sure. Except those except those of us that are except those of us that are not Catholic, yeah. not baptized in the church. Right. It, 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 it is to some degree, and, and that really is, uh, again, a, a works salvation is somewhat easier to believe than, okay, what, what does the Bible say? Because there is this sense that you know, I, I need to pay for my sin. I need to do that. Okay, there is some sense there. But what does the Bible say? Who, who paid for our sin? Ultimately, who paid for our sin? Okay, and to me, now granted, I was not necessarily, I wasn't necessarily raised in a Christian home. My parents weren't saved until I was almost 11. And they were at best nominal Christians, I would say. But in my own personal Christian life, and certainly through my seminary training, Bible training, and so forth, and my years in the ministry, I'll tell you what, folks, I sure like this a whole lot better than what anybody else might come up with. I really do. I surely do. And... Um, it, it is, when you, you think about it, it is hard to believe 
that I, if I remember the numbers, um, almost two billion or so people worldwide are Catholic. Okay. Um, you, are, you are on the nose. I had a sister-in-law. Okay. That actually it ended in divorce. Okay. About his brother Brian that died. He has one one sibling died, and when he died, he was buried up at Beverly. At the funeral, I mean everything went through okay. the Catholic stuff. Well, Wanda would call me, and that we're going back some years, twenty twenty some years. Wanda would say, Greg hasn't come home for a week after work. He worked for the state. She said, I know he ain't after nobody. She said, where would he be? And I said, I don't know, Wanda. I don't know. What, this went on for months. She finally found out he was laying. And he's the one that always laid prostate, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way you say it. In the aisles of the church, you had to climb okay. over him. Okay. Literally climb over him. And he was at the graveyard, not, not one, not two, not three, not four. He might be there till 11, 12 every night. Okay. So he was doing that, trying to pray uh, okay. Brian out. Okay. And um, good, doing all the good works he could on his behalf. Okay. And money okay. would have been no object okay. to Okay. But he wouldn't tell her anything. He did okay. not feel as though he had to right. do that. Right, right. And, but that you were exactly on the nose about that, and it, she stayed about ten years, and, and it ended up divorce. Okay. Well, you, you were asking me where did where did belief in in purgatory come from, or how did how did all of that get to where we are? Well, I came to find out in my study that the Second Council of Lyon in 1274, the Roman Catholic Church defined its teachings for the first time. In pur of, of purgatory, okay? There was some question prior to that as far as um, what purgatory was, who was there, and so forth and so on. The idea of a transitional state, because you think about, okay, how many of you have ever asked or been asked by somebody, maybe they're unsaved, unchurched, and you witness to them, coworker, friend, neighbor, whoever it happens to be, and you begin, and they have questions, and they ask you the question, "Where am I going to go when I die?" I'm concerned about it. Maybe it is at the funeral of somebody. They get to thinking about the fact that they, this person died, and if you know life life repeats itself, and life is terminal, there's going to come a time when I'm probably going to be right where they are. Where am I going when I die? And I, I, I honestly believe that it is the Catholic Church, the, the purgatory, came out of maybe that question. I don't know for sure. That's only my guess. Um, but uh, history has shown that this particular idea, this transitional state, which is, you know, the Catholic answer is purgatory. Okay, what happens after you die? Um, the history of it dates back well before the time of Christ in many other religions, the idea of what happens to somebody. You think about um, the pharaohs in Egypt. You know, there are documentaries on National Geographic almost a, 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 a weekly, monthly <coughs> basis or so. You know, when they go into the Valley of the Kings and they are still excavating and they're still, in, and, and you go into those very elaborate tombs and what do you find? You find a lot of different stuff that is there to help the Pharaoh or whoever happens to be buried in that tomb over to the other side, okay? One of the reasons why, if I remember correctly, back again in the, the dark ages and medieval times and so forth, one of the reasons why, maybe you've seen movies to this effect, but they used to do this, um, they would place two coins on the eyelids of the deceased. You know what that was for? That was for, to pay the ferryman to take him across the river Styx. Okay? It's not just a song, okay? 
don't pay the ferryman, okay? It, it was, that's, that's what they believe. So this idea, man's idea of, okay, what answer for what happens to me after I die, in my thinking, that's part of where this progress came from, okay, progressed, and so forth. Um, they, they will give you biblical texts, okay, um, to support their claim, but their primary biblical text comes from the apocryphal book of 2 Maccabees, okay? You maybe never heard of that because it's not in the canon of, of uh, inspired scripture, okay? And that leads us into why isn't it, okay? That's not part of our study, so maybe we'll get to that at a later time. Um, they also cite, and I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 12, And look at verse 32, because they will pull this, this verse out of Scripture, and, and they will claim that it implies something related to purgatory. Okay, Notice, if you will, Matthew 12, 32, Jesus is speaking, and he says, And whosoever speak of the word against the Son of Man, it shall be, for it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, do you see purgatory there? Well, sure. In the world to come. See there? I, I don't know, but that's one of the verses that they use um, to imply that some sins will, will be forgiven in the world to come. Okay? Now, I'm not sure how they do that, but that is one of the verses. Um, another verse that they use is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 13, now Paul is talking about if any man build upon this foundation, this foundation that is laid, which is Christ, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, okay? He's talking about rewards when we get to heaven and so forth. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Where is purgatory in verse 13 or verse 15 that they, they pull out of Scripture and say, there it is? Did you about Paul? What what exactly about Paul? Right. Mm -hmm. I I would say they I would say they do. But they they will they will take what Paul says. And 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 honestly, they will twist it or or. or misinterpret it to mean something okay did you notice where it said fire in verse 13 yeah. and also in verse 15 himself shall be saved yet so as by fire mm -hmm. there's purgatory mm -hmm. but that's not what the bible says that's not what the verse says is it that's not what the verse says right it says there very plainly in verse 13, every man's work. And in verse 15, if any man's work. Okay? It's the work that is tested. It's not the worker. Okay? 
but they will pull those verses out of scripture the fire um, to them um, again proves their point that purgatory that temporary place of suffering is there in scripture okay now let's ask this question what does the bible say because the Bible, for the believer, is the final authority. It's not some church father, regardless of how how far or how how close to close to the end of the you know the close of the New Testament he lived. Okay, no matter what he says or anything like that, what does the Word of God say? Where do people go after they die? There's only two options. They either go to heaven or they go to hell. There is no other option, okay? Think about this. Um, look at, well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse number 8, Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, Philippians 1 and verse 23 says, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Okay, what was Paul wanting? He was wanting to go and be in heaven. Okay, um, but he also said to the Philippians, but to abide, basically to abide, to stay here is better for you. I would rather be in heaven than to, you know, and, and you, you read through the latter part, about the latter half of the book of Acts and, and Pauline epistles and so forth, and you understand that here is a man that was hounded everywhere he went. We know from the, one of his letters to the Corinthians that he was in peril everywhere he went. He was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was stoned, he was imprisoned, he, he, was, he was destitute, and all of that. And it's no wonder that his desire was to be where? I really want to be with the Lord. But it's better for me, or it's actually better for you, if I stay. Because Paul undoubtedly had a pastor's heart undoubtedly cared for the his his brothers and sisters in Christ right and he certainly wanted to go to heaven and that's that's definitely one of those places where we where people go when they die what's the other option I won't take you to Luke 16 for time's sake, but the latter part of verse 22 and verse 23 talk about the rich man died. Verse 23 says, and in hell. Now, you have to understand, he was not in hell because he was rich, okay? Ultimately, he was in hell because he rejected the gospel, okay? A relationship with the Lord and so forth. Um, so there's only two options. It's kind of funny to me that, um, you know, here in our town, I realize that Marietta is an old town. Um, but here in our town, you can actually go and you can go through ghost tours. I remember we were on vacation uh, several years ago uh, down, uh, was, we're, we were in Gettysburg, if I remember correctly, or uh, Tennessee. Okay, we were we were down there, and we went. We actually went on a ghost tour. Didn't see a thing, <laughs> which was kind of disappointing, really. Well, okay, okay, all right. You're that's right. They're they are invisible. Okay, but but people, even even Christian people, believe that. Their dearly, dearly departed stays around, right? And as much as we might want that, 
That's not the truth. That's not biblical. Okay? It's not biblical. There's two possibilities. They either go to heaven or they go to hell. They're not a red bird out there. On the right. They don't, yeah. you know, they're not a, not, not a red bird. Or um, I, I remember my mom telling me my father passed away in, in June of 2002. The following Easter, this very beautiful, beautifully colored rooster showed up. And if there ever was a Gamecock, he was one because he had spurs on him that were probably pretty close to two inches long. As a matter of fact, my brother saw two guys trying to catch this bird because they thought somebody's Gamecock got away. My mother was convinced that that was my dad. Oh my gosh. And I said, sorry, Mom, no. According to his testimony, your husband, my father, is even now with the Lord. There is no place called purgatory. The Bible doesn't say anything about purgatory. When Jesus was here, and, and this, is, this is very interesting to me, some, not just Catholics, but other groups that we've looked at, they, they pull out these different ideas and they, they make these different things up and so forth and so on. And you go back in Scripture and did, did Jesus not know? Did he not know that there was a, really a purgatory? If there had been, would he not have told us? Surely he would. Absolutely he would have. And even beyond that, Peter, wouldn't Peter have said something about it? As the first pope? Wouldn't Paul have said something about it? Surely he would have. There is that one scripture that says that Christ's spirit and all the things that were written down, so maybe he told one of them, and it wasn't written, and that's how it started. Okay. That, I suppose that could be a plausible explanation. And, and if, you, if you claimed it, I mean, if you claimed it, nobody, who's going to know? Right? It wasn't written down. It was verbal. Okay? But here, that's, that's in a very small nutshell. Some of what the Catholic Church believes about purgatory. And again, my, my desire is not to, you know, prove them wrong and us right, okay? Um, my desire is for us to uh, come to understand what Scripture has to say and be reminded again, over and over again, of what Scripture has to say. Because the final authority for the Catholic is the church. But the final authority for the Christian is God's word. Amen. And they will claim that they believe these things. And yet, down through the centuries, what have they, what have they proven? They've proven that actions speak louder than words. They, 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 they have believed these things and done these things, contrary to what God's word says. Any questions, comments, real quickly? All right, let's. Ha okay, go ahead, brother. The comment. What was said, a statement that was made. When you deny this being the word of God, the gospel is so simple. Amen. Because what they tried to do, my family did, and I know that that was probably more of the older Catholics. Oh, you did this. God's going to light on you like you wouldn't believe. 
I think there was one time I tried to hide in the basement. Right. God. Okay. Kind of like Jonah. But I'm, I'm glad that Jesus never gave up. What? Amen. He can save that which was lost. Well, Amen. I took as much as I could. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, I never did none of, half of that stuff. But I never had an argument with my mother-in-law or anybody. But I didn't force it because Mr. Shad would simply tell you, if you took your Bible out there, he would simply tell you the way out. Right. He didn't want you to come right. back ever again. Right. Amen. Sure. Amen. 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 Well, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have to, had to look into your word. And, and once again, Lord, just be reminded of the fact that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we can be assured that our sins are forgiven. We can be assured that we have heaven as our home. And we have eternal life. Amen. And we praise you and thank you for that. We pray that you would help us, Lord, just break our hearts mm -hmm. for those that believe otherwise. Mm -hmm. Again, not that, not that we can prove them wrong and prove ourselves right, feel good about it and pat ourselves on the back or win an argument simply because they are, they are souls for whom Jesus died. And while they would say that, that they believe that, they prove in their actions, they prove by their religious sacraments and their system that they believe something completely different. They do not believe that salvation comes by grace through faith in Christ alone. And Lord, we would pray that you would help us to be careful as we present the gospel to those that you give us opportunity to come in contact with. Help us to pray for them, Lord, that their eyes might be opened to their desperate need of salvation before it's eternally too late. We know where all the souls will be that reject Christ. They're not in purgatory on their way to heaven. They're even now separated from you and in hell. And that should break our hearts. And we pray that you would help us in the meantime to live lives in such a way that are pleasing in your sight. That nobody can, can point at our life and, and give reason not to follow Christ because of something that we did or something that we said that would turn them away. We ask your blessings on these prayer requests now. Work in every circumstance on behalf of these that we'll bring before your throne. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.